Welcome back. One of the interesting experiences here at Park City Television in doing interviews about films on a live television program is that we switch tack, we switch direction, and we certainly switch emotions in a wide variety of ways, and we're going to do that just now. The director is Peter Jan de Pew, and the film that he has made that is beautiful and in many ways, of course, heartbreaking as well at the very same time. This is about the impact of war on children and on Afghanistan. Specifically, the film is The Land of the Enlightened. Good morning, sir. Welcome. Hello. How are you? Congratulations. Thank you very much. How has your experience been so far? Uh, good. Yesterday was the premiere of the film, and uh, yeah, it was very interesting. Lots of good comments and uh, interesting Q&A. So I'm, I'm really happy to have the, uh, the film here in premiere at Sundance. I think it's uh, the perfect platform for this film, and I'm really delighted also the crew and the producers to be here. How was the reaction? Were there things that surprised you at all about the response to the film, whether it be the, the way that folks viewed it or, or things that were asked or wondered about in the Q&A afterwards? Not really. I expected the kind of questions we should be asked, like um, <clears throat> concerning, of course, we stayed like seven years in Afghanistan, so obviously there were many questions. How were the conditions? How was it to shoot for such a long time in Afghanistan? How was it being together with the American army in combat scenes? And <clears throat> also the, the living conditions, like you know, small questions like, but did you eat? How did you sleep in the middle of the mountains? Uh, of course. So yeah, I expected this kind of, of questions. Also, it's a hybrid film, so it's between fiction and documentary. So I knew we were gonna talk about also this kind of approach. Um, so in many ways, yeah, I expected uh, the question, but it was very interesting to talk about it again. <clears throat> it seems to me as though, of course, there's, there's been some blurring of lines between hard definitions of genres for some time now, but it feels a little bit like this particular Sundance Film Festival, there's a, almost an elevating of this blurring of the lines. Talk a little bit about how that happened for you. Was that a, an intent originally? Was it something that as you were shooting, and of course you had the luxury, maybe that's not the best use of term, but the luxury of time in, in being in the theater for mm -hmm. that length of time. Talk a little bit about that, that combination of those two genres or aspects of filmmaking. Yeah, sure. Um, for me, it was, first of all, the original approach was to make a documentary about, you know, the first um, aspect, like to, to give an idea about the war in Afghanistan, a very hard reality. And inside this war, we want to focus on the line of, the storyline of Afghan children, how they are surviving in this war. But in this storyline, we wanted to focus on their dreams, on their imagination, their fantasies, what, what was going to happen after the war and after the American troops would be drawn from Afghanistan. So, in that point of view, um, we were actually obliged to curate like a kind of a fiction line because if you want to express or if you want to show a dream of a kid, you have to enter inside another world. So, that was one of the reasons why it suddenly became like a blend between fiction and documentary. Another reason was also that the landscapes and the, the you know, the very impressing environment of Afghanistan, I wanted to to transform it as a kind of a character in the film. So I needed to, I wanted to shoot also in a very aesthetical, very visual way. And that's also the reason why it became very cinematographic and it gives also this fiction aspect or this more, yeah, cinematographic view, not really documentary uh, 100% we say, uh, like uh, in, in, in the most true way. One of the things that always fascinates me about the, the documentary side, in this case of your film, but, but in all documentary films, there is a, a relationship between the filmmaker and the subject or subjects, and sometimes that can be a, a challenging aspect logistically of the conversation. And I use the example of uh, Jim, the James Foley story, where the filmmaker, Brian Oakes, has had a relationship with the family since he was a young boy, a friend of James Foley. So you see obviously that there's already a bond there between filmmaker and subjects in the Foley family. Talk about that process at the beginning of 
earning trust, I can only imagine with these children in this Mm -hmm. war-torn, for lack of a better way to put it, landscape that there may have been tremendous challenges to kind of even get to day one where you could really start rolling and telling the story. Mm -hmm. Talk about that experience if you would. Yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> as I told, it was a long trip, so it took like almost eight years, seven years. So the very beginning, I, w I needed to discover and to learn about Afghanistan, about the culture. I needed to learn the language as well because uh, I wanted to make a story about children, so I needed to communicate with them in a very direct way, not with translators in between. I needed to tell myself what I want and what the story was about. So the first years were very complicated because everything was new, no one spoke English, I had to learn a language very fast, I had to discover a country which is very difficult to travel in, so I needed to, to count to many Afghan friends that I started to make at that time. And um, little by little we went into the fields, discovered a group of kill the children that I wanted to make the story with. So I went back like year after year and I spent like a long time with them, months. Because even <clears throat> if you want to go in the mountains of Afghanistan, it's not like you, you, you go there and in a week you do something and you're back. I mean, sometimes for reaching one location, it took like from the city, from Kabul to that location, like three weeks, only traveling time. So you can imagine you were there away from home like four or five months. Um, so I stayed a lot of time with them and I tried to, to explain what we want to do, but for them cinema is very unknown. They don't sure. know television. Not part of their lives. Yeah, um, I need, they, they never saw a camera. They thought this camera was a kind of a weapon or, or a rocket launcher wow. or something. So, um, but I wanted to focus also on, you know, I wanted to, to, to shoot the story in a very, how would I say, um, in a natural way. So um, I wanted to get the, to make them understand that this camera was just a tool to capture their story and they would do in daily life. I wanted to let them do in daily life what they're used to do. So again, it was a question of, like you're saying, gaining trust uh, and coming back time by time, drinking tea, talk with the parents, talk with the, 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 the people around and try to talk with the governor, with the police the commanders, with the local warlords, because Afghanistan is not like a central power structure from right. Kabul, every, it's like territories with different powers. Five domes. Yeah, it's five domes. yeah that's, that's right. So, of course, uh, lots of negotiations, uh, lots of drinking teas and uh, spending <laughs> time. That was uh, for sure what, what we needed to do. Patient. Yes, Indeed. definitely. Shall we take a look at a little sure. bit of this wonderful film? Thank you. This is The Land of the Enlightened. A specific kind of beauty, a beauty that is filled with many emotions, it seems. Congratulations on this film. Thank uh, you very much. More screenings to come? Yeah, uh, tonight is uh, another screening in Salt Lake City. Uh, this morning were press screenings. And then I think uh, tomorrow as well, the day after tomorrow, like four more screenings to go, yes. And after such a long and arduous production, are you already working on your next film or taking a little time? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, we're already in full script writing for a new film, but it's going to be a complete fiction project, so nothing to do with the commentary. Um, but it's, uh, it's going to take place in my hometown uh, and home country, actually. It's about a poaching gang and about uh, a black history in Belgium in the 80s and the 90s and some yeah, corruption with politics involved and so. But it's in fully writing process, so still many ways to go. Very good. Well, the smile on your face certainly tells the story of your <laughs> excitement for your next project. Thank you very much. Peter Jan de Pius, so nice to meet you. Thank you for coming and spending some time with us here. Sure. Best wishes not only here in the festival, but for continued success. Thanks Thank a lot. You. Thank you. The film is Land of the Enlightened. The filmmaker is Peter Jan de Pew. Make sure to go to Sundance.org to find out more about screening times. And I do believe, my friends, that that is all the time that we have for the show today. Of course, we'll be back tomorrow morning again live at 9 a.m. Join us then. For Jeff Hansen, I'm Terry Burden. Have a great day.